you see they think it's all over with Gary and Rory as a Premier League ref who once actually forgot to take his yellow card to a European Cup game in France. The mistake came to light in the 22nd minute when Roy Keane was shown a Sainsbury's reward card. <laughs> David Ellery. Just about, just about. With David and Jonathan is the star of the forthcoming film, Mike Bassett, England manager, who started life as a builder before taking up performing. He's now a brilliant screen actor, although he never bothers coming back to finish off the last few lines. <laughs> Ricky Tomlinson. <laughs> we open the show with our sporting bluff round, David, Jonathan and Ricky. Here's our other guest doing what he does best. Cole gets booked. He's calling on all his uh, experience of these type of fixtures down the years. <laughs> now, refereeing recently went professional, but what have you got to say about the new ref's contracts, Gary's team? Now they've turned professional, Premiership referees are not allowed to swear at the players. Now they've turned professional, pre Premiership... Pre 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 <laughs> now they've turned professional... He's after professional. the Penguin advert now. <laughs> 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 he knows where the easy money is. Now they've turned professional, Premiership referees are not allowed to socialise with the players. Now they've turned professional, Premiership referees are not allowed to have sex the night before a match. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ellie, are you, you, you are, you're a teacher as well, is that correct? So it's rumoured, yes. They tell me you're, you're a housemaster at Howard, is that correct? And so a housemaster, what kind of house do you play there? Is it like Big Beat, Thundertron? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I believe it's one of the best schools in the country. I think it's the second best school in the country, is that not correct? No, it's not correct. It's after Hogwarts School of Wizarding Witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, what a fine old school that must be. Do you still place a lot of emphasis on these three R's, the weeding, widening, and arithmetic? <laughs> <laughs> and woodwork. <laughs> Are you allowed to cane the boys there? No. Not even in your free time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How about the question? Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt the uh, Jonathan Ross show. So socialising, socialising <laughs> with the players. David, did you ever hang out with the umpires? Because I should imagine the players would have nothing to do with you, would they? <laughs> <laughs> but he's socialising, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, Gary's famous for his parties, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I'm honoured and indeed not a little touch that I've been invited to a couple of them. And Gary lays absolutely everything on you could want. There's the Quality Street, there's as much Viennetta as you need. All you have to bring along is a wife to swap. That's it. <laughs> but one word of advice, and I think you know what I'm going to say now. Yeah. When you're rummaging in that bowl full of car keys, try not to get the vulva. <laughs> I had a night of passionate sex with Alan Hansen as a result. And <laughs> the physical side was okay, but it was the analysis afterwards. That was... I was wet. <laughs> swearing. Was that swearing. the next one? Swearing. swearing. What do they swear about you, David? What sort of swear words come your way? <laughs> they call you a cad or a... Cad? Oh, really? <laughs> really? How, do, how do you spell cad? Doesn't it, <laughs> doesn't it finish in a T? <laughs> no, that's a cat. <laughs> You see? Yeah. That's why you're a good yeah. teacher. Yeah. <laughs> but you're a big football fan, aren't you? Um, I used to be. If you were at a match and, uh, say, uh, Mr. Ellie was refereeing, what kind of warm, traditional Sir. greeting would the Liverpudlians give him? <laughs> he couldn't say that on this programme, mate. Jesus. Well, he's got a bit of a reputation <laughs> in Liverpool, actually. Has he? Oh, uh, yeah. Second only to Hitler. <laughs> No, I, mean, I, think, I think he's quite good. He makes an awful lot of mistakes, but he does them in all honesty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what was the final thing they banned from having sex, sex. with players? Sex. sex. No, uh, not with players, what? no. Really. <laughs> Refs can't get a lot. It's an unpopular profession. You know that. We're saying nothing you don't know. But this is what strikes me strange about your psychology. May I delve for a little while? May I act the amateur psychologist? <laughs> what is it in you, sir, <laughs> that drives you to seek out such unpopular roles in life? You're the teacher? I believe during the week. A bit of refereeing on Saturday. And Sunday, is it true, you go out and clamp cars? <laughs> sex? No, it can't be no, sex. No, I reckon, I reckon it's swearing. You reckon it's swearing? Oh, yeah. You think no, that swearing. David is telling the truth, let's see if you're right. Oh, that's 
sex? No, in fact, Rory gave it to us straight. The referee's chief, Philip Don, said, what? where referees stay over, we will be telling them not to take partners and wives with them on Friday night so that there are very few distractions and they can focus their minds on what they have to do the following day. <laughs> the first referee to be caught in a compromising position with his wife has already been told to appear before a disciplinary panel. Although his defence is, there were two men between him and a possible scoring opportunity. <laughs> It seems a bizarre rule, though. Surely the best way to make sure anyone doesn't have sex the night before games is to put them in a hotel bedroom with their wives. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, of course, darling. <laughs> Gary, Rory and David, it's the only ever wild card to win Wimbledon for you. is over. We have a new Wimbledon champion. That's Goran Ivanisevic beating Pat Rafter to win Wimbledon this summer. We want to know what the inspiration was behind Goran's historic win. David's team. Goran was inspired by watching Changing Rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Goran Ivanisevic was inspired by watching the Teletubbies. Goran Ivanisevic was inspired by watching Film 2001, which, by the way, started again this week, Thursday night's BBC. <laughs> well, you'll have to tell them they won't have watched it. <laughs> so what, Teletubbies? Is that what? what you said to Gaza when you sent him off? What? Time for Tubby Bye Bye. <laughs> Sorry, you're used to schoolboy humour, aren't you, mm. David, I presume? Yes, you're very good at it. <laughs> I, was ter I, was, when I, I was terrible at school. I was, one of those, I was always swearing in class, you know, always going off for a cigarette, and I was once found um, having it off with a girl from the local girls' high school behind the bicycle sheds. So I gave up teaching after that. <laughs> <laughs> 2000, from 2001. Can't believe that crap's still on. <laughs> He used to be good with that, what's it, that Barry Norman? Maybe? Yeah, he was very good. He was good, wasn't he yeah. good? Hey. Yeah. That was someone who knew a film when he saw it. I think it's, um, it's Teletubbies. Isn't Teletubbies. It? I remember, yeah. it's definitely Teletubbies. Okay, so you think that David was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. Mm -hmm. Once again. Yes, David nice couldn't tell a lie. Goran Ivanisevic had a strict routine to relax during Wimbledon, which involved watching the Teletubbies every morning. Tim Henman also had his own method of relaxing at Wimbledon. He likes to settle back in an easy chair and watch the final on TV. <laughs> the Teletubbies have been amazingly successful, despite being purple, incoherent and prone to falling over. Still, it worked for Brian Clough. <laughs> <laughs> and the scores at the end of that round are David's team with no points and Gary's team with three. Oh. It's the turn of the lip-reading round, where words spoken in haste and repented at leisure are revealed to a watching world. Gary's team, now obviously Mr Ellery's refereeing, normally inspires gasps of admiration from the players, but not always. A great ball, now Ferguson went down, a big appeal from the fans for a penalty and from the player. Mr Ellery is not interested. Here's Campbell, however, he can bring Everton level, here he goes down, and this time he does get a penalty. And there's been a yellow card for, presumably, Sullivan for complaining about the decision. That was a match between Tottenham and Everton just last month. Now, we've asked a lip-reading expert to tell us what the players were saying to David. So, what do you think was said? Can you play for Tottenham once? Yeah, and Everton. Really? Mm -hmm. You only play for shit teams, didn't you, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, that's a nice easy uh, round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> I could read your, your lips there, there, David. You were yeah. definitely saying, leave me alone, I didn't get my leg over last night. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Duncan Ferguson, do you? He's Scottish. That's <laughs> <laughs> the end of your refereeing career. You can't say something like that. Statement of fact. Yes, he is Scottish, true, yes. yes. But it was yes. a statement of fact in response to the comment, you don't like Duncan Ferguson, <laughs> do you, David? No, but as a teacher, you just reply as fact. It's yes. his misinterpretation. You I can't just, weasel no. your way out of that one, no. Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan. 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 Sullivan just said that he's amazed how calm I stay in such 
fraught conditions. <laughs> and how surprisingly good looking you are close up. Because he's banned the night before as well, you see, so it's a bit <laughs> Did it care to me that they say there's no swearing, or we're told off for swearing on television, but deaf people watching football matches must have a great time, all that swearing, you know, yeah. they can lip read, you know. So just for the deaf people watching. <laughs> it was quite obvious what um, Sullivan was saying, wasn't it? It's called Wigs Are Us, 24 The High Street. <laughs> <laughs> you can't book but, me now. All right. <laughs> Do you like all refs, Rory? Some I don't like. I right. mean, I don't like uh, Graham Barber, uh, Graham Pohl, um, Steve Dunn, and Paul Durkin. That's quite a long list. Haven't finished yet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> While you're here, can you explain the... Do you know what the offside rule is? The what? <laughs> is that when the flag goes up? Oh, is that... Is that is I think that... so. Well, and then I blow the whistle. Mm. So when is the player offside? When the flag goes up. <laughs> I just explained it. <laughs> I always thought a player was offside when Andy Gray said a player was offside. Are you trying to argue? <laughs> Ferguson looked like he was calling you Mr. Ellery. Mr. Yes, they do in Scotland. They call referees Mr. They're so very why polite. don't they call you Mr. Lardy Dar Gunner Graham? <laughs> <laughs> you want us to do, for Ferguson, you want us to tell what Ferguson prepare. said? Yeah, well, any of them. Any of them, really. Doherty was saying something about I was going for the ball or I tried for the ball, wasn't he? I'll give you, I'll give you three points. I'll give you three <laughs> points for that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't remember any of it. <laughs> so Duncan Ferguson protested. I left him alone. Don't believe him. Gary Doherty claimed I got the ball while Spurs goalie Neil Sullivan said, OK, 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 hey, come on, let's make it a foul. Just don't make him unavailable. After one controversial decision against Man United, a vicious hate mail campaign was launched against David Ellery by United fans. For a long time, the only letters it was safe to open were those with a Manchester postmark. <laughs> Gary here was, of course, never booked, because he never swore, or tackled, or committed himself, or headed the ball, or did any work at all. <laughs> you know, it's uncanny, though. I just thought, if you were to shave the hair off the middle of your... Bonds, you would look dead spit for David. Yes, you would actually, yeah. Hey, my ears are not that bad. No, you are. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps if they were a bit bigger, you'd have remembered some of the things that had been said. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, we take you back to the incident in the last round of this year's Open when Ian Woosnam's caddy, Miles Byrne, put one too many clubs in his bag, thus incurring the two-shot penalty that cost Woosnam the lead. So, what was being muttered there? You can see why golf gets such a big audience. That was dramatic. <laughs> I was on the edge of my seat there, attention! <laughs> Caddy, sort of butler type thing, isn't it? That's the sort of thing yeah. it is. <laughs> just, 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 you know about that, don't you? David, of course, used to get his butler to field for him. <laughs> I think he's saying, if I so, get disqualified then I'm going to stick the rest of them clubs up your ass. <laughs> I think he's I'm saying. fairly sure that is what he's saying. It is. Saying. That's exactly what he said. Yeah, I was it's there. certainly what he's thinking. No, golf's a game for you, isn't it? I'm tempted those by Those trousers, those trousers would just absolutely sit you down to the ground, wouldn't they? Oh, well, ideally, otherwise they'd be shorts. <laughs> I remember when this happened, because also that caddy messed up again, didn't he? He, over, he did oversleep the next time. Yeah, he counted yeah. the wrong He didn't actually fire him after, even though he yeah. lost something like 100 grand or something? 128,000 pounds, I think it he was. He lost, yeah, yeah. Give or take. Oh. I think Woozy said there's going to be a hole in one ear shortly, but it's got nothing to do with the golf. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say something like, you give him one job to do, and he messes that up? I mean, I'll give me three so. points for that. Wow, well yeah. done. Yeah. Well, this being a family programme, the only bit we can reveal was that Woosnam was saying to himself about Miles Byrne, you give him one job to do, and he doesn't do it. By the way, we asked our lip-reading expert to try and interpret this, but he couldn't make head nor tail of it. They shouldn't be shouting at me! They shouldn't be shouting at you! And do you know why? Because it's f***ing half-time! And we're f***ing turned them down to the f***ing Mexicans! F***ing wrong with you! Get your f***ing fingers out! Where's your bottle f***ing gun? I'm coming f***ing! Who are f***ing talking to you? 
If you don't want to wear this shit, get off. There's thousands of kids out there who die for that shit. <laughs> I've never swore before, and I have to go to a... Oh, you I... have, come on! I have to go to special lessons from a team of football referees to learn that sort of thing. <laughs> so the score's at the end of that round, of David's team with three, and Gary's team with six. <laughs> it's what's going on now, David's team, cast your eyes over this. Off you go. <laughs> I think I think he's saying to her, Well, thank you very much, we normally just shake hands. <laughs> he could have been saying to her, entry or rear entry. <laughs> Actually, do you want the bad news? <laughs> that shot widens out to reveal John McCrigg underneath. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there, but if Geoffrey Archer is watching, you should store that image up next time Big Barry calls you to his cell in Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd be right if I think it's something to do with... sport. <laughs> Horse racing, 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 horse You saw Sky Sports presenter Kirsty Gallagher riding jockey Frankie Dettori all in the name of promoting Discover Racing, a campaign to get non-racing fans interested in the sport. Well, I'm keen. So <laughs> Frankie wasn't laughing, though, just after that, when he tripped up and had to be shot by a vet. <laughs> Back in the days when it was allowed, Frankie Dettori admitted taking large quantities of laxatives to lose weight before a race, although he later regretted it, as the going was faster than he expected. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsty Gallagher says she loves going out to the cinema and enjoys romance mixed with horror. A night in with Rory, and she can get that for free. <laughs> Gary's team, take a look at this. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice, a little bit of heat, a little bit of running around, and a good puff is important, but at the same time, with too good of a puff, and you tend to uh, jerk your weapon and things like that. So that's pea shooting, yeah. I presume. Yeah. 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 An event which the Bangkok ladies are disqualified for, for some reason. Who <laughs> <laughs> do that at Harrow? What, pea shooters? They're firing ping pong balls out their fannies. <laughs> I know a woman in Liverpool who does it with footballs. <laughs> Have you ever had a pea shoot out of your whistle? No, no, no. He, <laughs> <laughs> he must be busting for one now. <laughs> no, progress in technology now. Really? So you don't have no, pea no, pea? not the great Acme Thunder with the pea. We now have the peeless Fox 40. So there are no peas in Glazy no General, is there? The Acme Thunder is all over first. The there are no peas. Does that mean you can't go <laughs> anymore? <laughs> is that the end? Do yeah, that's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're usually off before the end, Gary. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Smith should be sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he was. <laughs> so do we. Uh, okay. <laughs> Am I right in thinking, Mr. Ellie, that you might be refereeing at a Stoke match in the near future? Is that what might be going on here? I haven't gone down that low yet. <laughs> Nick, go on. Take some points off. Go on, Nick. Well, you'll be most welcome when you turn up. Thank you. <laughs> it's the national pea shooting competition. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I'll give you three points <laughs> for that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Those were extensive highlights of this year's pea shooting world championships held in that celebrated bastion of pea shooting, Witcham in Cambridgeshire. The title was won by a 15-year-old Liverpudlian, David Hollis. The championship started in the 1960s when a local teacher searched his pupils for contraband and confiscated several pea shooters. For the same reason, this year sees the start of the World Razzle Reading Championship. <laughs> And the score at the end of that round is David's team with six points and Gary's team with nine.
touching moments now as we play Field of Sportsman, Gary and Rory. You're first this week. Oh. If you'd like to go and take your positions. <laughs> Blindfolds on. You have 90 seconds to work out who has come between you. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I found that I didn't know what it. I know what it is. It's Luke Chadwick doing his spot. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's hot. laughs> I wonder what it could be. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was close. Let's, let's be fair, you can oh. miss, can you? Is it <laughs> Posh Spice and their identical twin sister, yeah? <laughs> uh, oh. It, it would be a pea shooter, would it? Yeah, what's his name, though? Is it Come David on. Hollis? Yes, oh. I've got it. Uh, yeah. you get that? Good, OK, David and Jonathan, could you move to your places, please? OK, blindfold's on. Before we start, uh, what, David, again? I want to assure you, I've had a word with the producer. I know everyone thinks this show, I mean, there's a little bit yeah. of production goes on. And it, cut this out of the show, but I told the audience here, I've insisted. I said, I'm tired of it. We had a bloody zebra one week, yep. and we've had two out-of-shape fat blokes. <laughs> and I said, unless we get a fit young girl, I'm not playing, yep. we've got a fit young okay. girl. Yep. I don't know who it is. <laughs> or else I said, I'm off. Strap yourself in, boy. They promised me okay, a treat. Okay, come on. Okay, okay. Sir Ignis, come on. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? You can tell from the throat. She's spicy. She's a spicy young girl. I tell you, I tell you, listen yep. to that. They yep. know. I bet it's one of those little bendy gymnasts. It's all on. <laughs> Your time starts I'm now. I'm enjoy this. Oh, oh where's that? It's certainly a little wriggler. Well, oh, I tell you what, she's, she is fit. <laughs> Good heavens. Oh, feel down here. I don't know. <laughs> Anyone got any bottles that need opening? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's, it's, not right. it's like a little bag of locks. <laughs> Be careful, she'll break your fingers. fingers. <laughs> I tell you, she'd snap it right off. <laughs> Is it Christine <laughs> Hamilton? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Is it? Would you, um, love, would you guide me in? <laughs> it's, it's a lady weightlifter. It's, it's a, a, a bodybuilder. It's a lady bodybuilder. Yes, I'll give you the voice for that. Yeah. It's a lame girl. How are you doing? Great to meet you. Well done. Thank you very much. Lame girl. Oh, World <laughs> champion. Thank you, Lane. Thank you, Lane. <laughs> Nick, Nick, you know, you, you know you're wondering what to get David for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> of course, at the back. end of that round, David's team with nine points and Gary's team with 12. <laughs> We end it all with the name game. The leaders goes first, which is Gary's team. Could you pass those along to Rory, please? Thank you very much. As many names as you can in 90 seconds. OK. Time starts now. Um, we saw him being mounted by uh, Kirsty Geller earlier. Victoria. Lucky, Victoria. But correct. This is the famous referee of the 70s and a in a pear tree. Pat, Pat oh, Partridge. Very good indeed. This is um, a, a light welterweight um, a champion. Uh, same name as... Uh, 
Same first name as... Ricky. Ricky, yeah. Same <laughs> name as Ricky. Well, it's Ricky. Um, <laughs> and second name, another Liverpudlian, uh, Degsy. Degsy, you know, the famous... Uh, oh. <laughs> Degsy. Hatton. Hatton. Uh, Ricky Hatton, yeah. Um, this is um, a Fulham, scored against, uh, scored a very lucky goal against Arsenal for Fulham. His first name is oh. the same as the Avenger, the man for the Avengers, you know, John. Steed. That, that, Mal Court. Mal, 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 yeah, Mal, Mal, Mal Bronk. Bronk, yeah. Very it. good, yes. This is a Swedish referee. Uh, first name Swedish for Andrew. Anders Frisk. Oh, he's very good, isn't he? That's, this is uh, Bowler. His first name is something that referees can't do the night before a game. <laughs> shag. Uh, not, yeah, more Christian name than Shag, actually. You know, <laughs> you know like... Make love. Um, <laughs> uh, think of James Bond. Orange face, big eyebrow. Roger. Thank you. And it's something, something you never hear from Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's oh, awesome. <laughs> Silent. Silent. <laughs> Ricky, can you pass this to Jonathan, please? Okay, nine will win it for you. Here we go. Oh, another swim. We're going to do it. Go, on, go, go. Wimbledon champion this year at uh, outside oh, seat. Oh, okay, there you go. This was an English manager bloke uh, who you play in a new movie. Mike Foster. Okay. Oh, this guy well is a Scottish cricketer. The second name is the American word for your buttocks. The backside. They say, I'm going to kick oh, your. Fan fan no, they don't. <laughs> I'm going to kick you off. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and the first name is, uh, when you, when, at school, when someone says something to you, you go, yeah, wreck on. <laughs> yeah, wreck on, wreck on D. Okay, the first bit is, um, it's, uh, no, the second bit, you know when you say the second bit, but, you go, something me no buts. <laughs> if, 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 okay. And the first bit, what goes with if, is, 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 is as if, yeah, okay, this is, um, is, uh, is a rugby union player. First name, you'll know this, is the second name of the man who directed Lawrence of Arabia. Lean. Lean, well done. Second name, you know in Mary Poppins, you'll know this, the bloke who plays the chimney sweep. Come on, Mary, <laughs> it's a jolly holiday. <laughs> Dick, Van <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. I mean, if it wasn't Dick Van Dyke, but you switched the first and the second, it Dyke would be Dick, Dyke yeah. Van Dick. There you go, thank you very much indeed. Uh, oh, dear. All right. He's a, he played for, he's a Turkish football player, he played for Blackburn. If you were a homosexualist, <laughs> but you were overly flamboyant, <laughs> they might consider you to be... Rossi. No, no. It, <laughs> You know. <laughs> a bit too much of you. Oh, look at her. You know. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at the hair on her. You know. You, if it's a bit much, then if you're a homosexual, you are. Look, dog. I didn't want anyone to know for crazy. Oh, two gay. Two gay. Two gay. Two gay. Two gay. You can be two gay. <laughs> you can't be two gay. <laughs> So David's team have 12, but this week's winner is Gary's team with 17. So our thanks to Gary, Rory and David, David, Jonathan and Ricky. It's Friday night, so we're all off to meet up with some referees' wives. My name's Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now.